of crimes. And some big developments tonight in the case of this famous bodybuilding couple accused of a heavy crime. Are they responsible for a grisly murder? But we begin with a big exclusive in the disappearance of newlywed George Smith, who was last seen on board a cruise ship with his fiance this summer. The head of security for the Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, Greg Purdy, is going to join us for his first interview about the mystery. We're going to speak with him in just a moment. But first, here's what George Smith's family told us in an interview that we aired here last night. They said the cruise line is hiding something in George's disappearance. Evidence of a cover-up with Royal Caribbean, because that, if they had left that evidence, it would have been a lot easier for the FBI to work on the case. But they were seen 7.30 or 8 o'clock in the morning washing that off even before the Turkish police came on board. So, uh, And then it was painted uh, over it, before the FBI got on the boat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, who it, knows what was there, left there they, for the FBI. They knew there was blood there. And what did they say to you, Bree? No news? No, no news. No news. No news. No news. No news. That's where we kept getting no news. From Royal Caribbean. Yeah. And as they had no update for you. No. Right. They knew right. that there was blood there. Mm -hmm. Yes. But didn't tell you. Right. Mm -hmm. So they had no Th that's information. That's typically no. the way they work. It's risk management. So they management. lied. Yeah. And joining us for an exclusive interview is Greg Purdy. He's the Director of Safety, Security, and Environment for Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, which is finally breaking its silence about the case. We're going to get to the cover-up in a moment. But, Mr. Purdy, first of all, why are you finally speaking out now? Well, Rita, we have, in, in each of these cases, we have several things to consider. First and foremost, the sensitivity to the privacy of the family. We also have a responsibility to respect the integrity of the FBI's investigation, which we are doing. However, we also have an obligation to, to our employees and to our guests to let them know that, that in this case we handled it carefully, sensitively, and appropriately. And I'm, I'm um, going to walk you through a lot of stuff, if I could. Let's start first off, I think, for folks who are just sort of tuning in, walk us through. First of all, when you knew that something was wrong on your ship, when did you find that out, and what was the first indication? Our first indication was when two guests pointed out that there were what appeared to be bloodstains on the canopy overseeing the lifeboats. Im immediately, the security started an investigation and narrowed down the search to, to the cabin uh, of the Smiths. Uh, we started doing announcements to find them upon we, we did locate Miss Smith uh, we did not find George Smith and we did a full search of the ship let me At ask that you point, let me ask we, if, I, if I could real quick, notify how big, the authorities how big was the blood let, let me kind of I'm gonna walk you through it in pieces if I could what how much blood was there on the canopy well you've seen what I've seen which are the are the photos that you have displayed and the, the canopy is fairly large um, but but that's really all the information that I have how much blood was in the room? We were told that there are a number of uh, blood stains in the room on the sheets, on a towel, also a tissue in the bathroom. That's correct, right? Well, what is correct is that as soon as we, as soon as we had this reported, we could we, uh, we uh, called the authorities. They came on board, co conducted their forensic investigation. This did include taking some items, doing uh, the typical dusting of fingerprints, taking some samples, and taking photographs. All of this was turned over to the FBI, who were working in cooperation with the Turkish authorities that very first day. Do we know whose blood it was in the room? And again, we're told it was on a, on a piece of tissue, that it's also on a, uh, sheets, on a towel. Of course, we, as you point out, the, the canopy. Do we know whose blood that was? Well, all, all this information, again, has been turned over to the FBI, and, and we're cooperating fully with them on this. However, though, that's more appropriately handled by them. Let me walk you through again, Mr. Purdy. You said that you, you put out a page at that point, uh, went to the cabin, obviously didn't see them in the cabin, put out a page. Where did you find Jennifer Smith, the wife of George Smith? Upon searching through the ship and, and after making announcements, we were notified that she was in the spa. So we, we sent um, some senior officers there to meet with Mrs. Smith. Um, as soon as we had indications that that George Smith may in fact be missing. We uh, informed her. We also immediately assigned a senior female officer named Maria uh, to accompany her and to ensure that she was as comfortable as possible throughout the day, including when she was taken ashore by the authorities for further uh, interviews uh, as part of their investigation. What Maria stayed with her um, all the way up until even, even the medical exam that you've heard about. In fact, it was Maria who demanded that, that everybody, except for the doctor and the nurse, uh, leave the room during that examination. And I want to ask uh, about uh, some of the things that obviously your, your company did do, uh, because I know the allegation is uh, from Jennifer Smith that she was sort of left alone. But let me go back to the spa. 
she's approached by Royal Caribbean in the spa, this is Jennifer Smith. What was the first thing that she said to your staff uh, when your staff asked, where's your husband? Well, again, her, her specific comments and, and what is documented, that's all part of an investigation. And, and um, I, I don't want to go into what her comments were, um, but we did just ensure that she was treated with care and sensitivity and that we immediately assigned someone to oversee her throughout the day. And, and as a matter of fact, even upon the ship's departure, we left her with contact information and left her in the hands of the U.S. consulate in was she Was she coherent? Was she able to provide any information? Well, this is all this is all part of the investigation, and I and I simply don't want to comment on on what the interviews and what everything has has revealed there, as as she doesn't either. We've both been um, very committed to cooperating with the FBI in this investigation. But she did not report that her husband was missing. You had to track her down. Is that correct? Well. We, we did, she did not report that her husband was missing. We, we found that he was missing based on our, our uh, narrowing it down to the cabin and making announcements for both of them actually. And then after locating her in the spa, um, we still hadn't ruled out that he may be somewhere and we continued to search. Tell and ultimately found that he was missing. Tell us about her appearance. Um, we understand she might've been wearing clothes from the night before, is that correct? Miss. Mrs. Hagel Smith was wearing clothes from the night before, and we did provide her with clothes. And, and um, again, our Maria Marie helped her get everything um, so that she could be ready to go for the interviews um, with the authorities. What was she doing in the spa at 8:30 in the morning? Uh, after, from what everyone's been saying, as a night drinking, that they were both drinking. Was she working out? Was she just sitting there? Well, as, as uh, is common in the spa, people go there for massages, and I understand she did have a massage scheduled that morning. That's really all the details I have for that. What was her mood when she was approached by Royal Caribbean? Because I think that's important uh, to go to state of mind and to see how it was handled by your cruise line. Uh, was she upset? Was she incoherent? Was she uh, drunk from the night before? I, I agree that this is important. However, it's it's uh, difficult to understand. This was once we told her that he may be missing. It's it's incomprehensible to understand um, what's going through people's minds. So I don't want to characterize her behavior or or comment on on how she acted. I, I think that that's all part of the investigation. Did she seem to think maybe he was in another room or went somewhere else, or maybe that he wasn't missing? That he just maybe you know went out somewhere else that night. All, all of these are possibilities, and that's why we immediately informed the authorities. We wanted to conduct a, a professional investigation with the authorities, and we gave them access to the room, items in the room, the CCTV tapes that we have on the ship, access to other guests and crew members, and we've continued to cooperate thoroughly while maintaining uh, some sensitivity for the privacy of, of everyone involved, including Mrs. Hagel-Smith. Let me play, if I could, this is some comments that she obviously has done a couple of interviews. Let me play some comments that she said about the cruise line. They just basically said, you know, they want you to get off the ship in Turkey. They want you, to, you know, to come for some, some questions. You're in Turkey. You obviously, you don't speak the language. Did they give you money? Did no. they give you transportation? No. Did they give you any guidance at all? No. And then finally, when I was taken back to the dock um, where the cruise ship was, I see my bags. I see George's suitcases, I see my suitcases, and I see 10 Royal Caribbean logoed plastic souvenir bags on the dock, and I just froze. Mr. Purdy, was she kicked off the ship and treated poorly? Again, this is an unimaginable event for her to go through, and the things that she recollects now may, may be hard to perceive at the time uh, what would be sticking out in her mind. We treated her with care, um, sensitivity. We had Marie with her the entire day. And Marie is who? We did not Marie kick is, her off the what ship. Is Mar who is Marie? Marie is a, a shipboard officer on our ship who, who the captain, a senior officer, who the captain assigned to do nothing that day except to accompany Miss Hagel-Smith. And to, and to see, make sure that she was comfortable and that she was being treated properly. So she was never left alone, was not kicked off the ship? She was never left alone, with the exception of when the FBI and the Turkish judge were interviewing her and they, they actually required that Marie step out of the room. Other than that, Marie was with her the entire time, up until the end. Even with the, with the U.S. consulate involved, 
Um, and ultimately, when, when the ship left, we left her with full contact information for a Royal Caribbean representative in, in the port of Kusadasi. When did you alert the FBI? When did you alert the feds? In our company, for any kind of alleged uh, crime, it's, it's immediate. It's indoctrinated. As soon as the ship, the ship called us immediately upon hearing or discovering that Mr. Smith may be missing. That was at approximately 2.15 a.m. Miami time, and the, the, uh, our, our management immediately called the FBI. That's, that's 3 a.m. in the morning. We contacted the 24-hour number got the FBI involved with the Turkish authorities and, and assisted with everything that they required of us or requested and, and continue to do so today. Let me show what the family has said about the crime scene sort of being covered up. Here's what they had to tell. When you see blood dripping down the side of a boat, you know you've got a crime scene and that boat should have been stopped, locked down. Passengers should have been questioned. No one should have been allowed to get off the boat. Uh, you know, that, that was a crime scene, and it should have been treated as a crime scene, and Royal Caribbean did not treat it as and a crime scene. And we have evidence to the fact that there was enough blood in the room to warrant our suspicion. Mr. Purdy, uh, was that the spot that we saw, the canopy, was that painted over as some people have suspected? The canopy has never been painted over. To this day, the canopy was washed at the end of the day. After, after the Turkish authorities came on board, conducted a complete forensic investigation, again, taking samples, taking photographs, and taking certain items from the cabin. They gave us express permission to clean the canopy as well as the stateroom. We kept this, we did clean the canopy, um, and we, that's just with a, a high pressure water wash. We kept the stateroom sealed for an, the following six days while we were in communication with the FBI. So we, we really felt that we followed this by the book correctly and, and responsibly throughout. So you kept the stateroom blocked off, you said, for six days, is that what you just said? Yes. And wh what was the decision to sort of wash it over in the other? In hindsight, I guess now you're looking back, do you wish in retrospect you, you had kept those, preserved those? Well, in, in hindsight, it's, it's difficult to say what you would, could, or should do. Each case is different, and, and the bottom line is that we did everything requested of the authorities and only cleaned or disturbed a, a scene after we had been given express permission from the authorities. Uh, Turkish authorities, in this case, in communication with the FBI. Were crew members on board? Um, even following that, we, con we continued to make the ship, the, pe the crew, and people available to the FBI for the investigation. And in fact, that's my question. Were crew members interviewed? Yes. In fact, crew members were, were interviewed, as well as some passengers. Including the folks in the casino and also in the gambling area? Uh, again, it's the, it's the um, FBI's investigation. I'm not um, aware of this or don't want to go into the specifics of who they're interviewing, but we have made all of our crew members, all of their records, um, and, and all of our manifests for who was on board at the time available to the FBI. Mr. Purdy, if you could stick with us, I'm going to ask you uh, what the result of some of those questions, if you believe the crew members are not involved in any shape or form. We're going to have a lot more of this groundbreaking details about the cruise ship mystery right after the break. And also coming up, we've got some new details in the hunt for an escaped serial rapist. Police suspect that he's suspect he's going back to the scene of the crimes. They're going to join me live looking for your help tonight. And also some big developments in the hunt for two bodybuilders on the run. Cops have caught them and have just released new information about their capture. And there's no place like home for the holidays. But what if your home is the Playboy Mansion? I got a tour of the mansion and all its decorations. That's coming up. When winter skin hits, I itch. When it's way beyond dry, I itch. Unlike ordinary lotions, Gold Bond moisturizes and medicates to soothe and relieve dry, itchy skin. Ah. Gold Bond Medicated Lotion, the moisturizing fix that medicates the itch. Say hello to the Akenhead. Mr. Akenhead is a hypersensitive sound testing device that Buick engineers employ to help craft their quiet tuned cabins. But this process works so well, Mr. Akenhead hasn't had much to do lately. Don't worry, Mr. Akenhead. There are plenty of other car companies that still need your help. Introducing the all new quiet tuned Buick Lucerne Beyond Precision. We have 11 Palestinian names. Each had a hand in planning Munich. We want them dead. From acclaimed director Steven Spielberg comes the film Time Magazine calls his boldest feat yet, a masterpiece. Munich is spectacularly gripping, says Entertainment Weekly. It takes up the phone. We hit the remote. Hello. Hello. 
comes way up. One of the best movies of the year. Munich. Rated R. In select theaters everywhere January 6th. Um, do you have any I can't believe it's not butter? I'm craving that rich butter taste. Hey, Nikos! The gold key. I can't believe it's not butter. Wow. Made with sweet cream buttermilk for a fresh butter taste that's naturally cholesterol free. Nikos, you missed a spot. I can't believe it's not butter. Outrageously great taste without the cholesterol. Help keep my skin looking as young as I feel, I use L'Oreal Age Perfect. Age Perfect helps tighten sagging skin and visibly minimizes age spots as it hydrates with marine collagen. Look as young as you feel. Age Perfect Day and Night from L'Oreal Paris. McVie and Associates. The new 5 Series Sports Wagon with all wheel drive. Also available on the 5 Series sedan. Lisa BMW 525i for $439 a month through January 3rd. Touch history and feel the future. Israel, who knew? I'm confident the FBI knows who those people were, and I think they have the answers. Mm -hmm. And we, we have faith that the FBI, you know, mm -hmm. will make arrests mm -hmm. and will make convictions. Mm -hmm. My brother's murder. You do believe this will be solved? Yes. I do. Yes. It's I just do. very painful to have to right. wait this long. Um, you know, but but we've been told by the FBI that they're 100 percent committed and they will bring us answers. And of course, that's the family of George Smith. Let's bring back in Greg Purdy. He's the head of security and safety with the cruise line Royal Caribbean. Uh, right before the break, uh, Mr. Purdy, I was talking about the, the crew because there have been some questions. Did the crew cover something up? Did they push a body over if indeed that happened? Of course, we all don't know what happened. Did, are you confident tonight? Can you tell us and tell the American public that, that the crew has been cleared? Do you believe the crew, all your folks on board have been cleared? Well, first I want to emphasize that for all our crew and the culture of our company, safety is the number one priority. All, we have made all crew members accessible to the FBI for this investigation, and, and we have no indications to, to imply that our crew did anything wrong in this case. As a matter of fact, our crew took great care and sensitivity to make sure that this was handled properly, and that we also made sure that Ms. Hagel was comfortable, and that we did the, the best job we could um, considering this horrific situation that, that, that uh, occurred. What about passengers? As, as far as passengers, um, this is again, we've, we've made all of them, all their names and information available to the FBI. I'm sure that they have uh, been interviewed, several of them. Several of them have made statements, and it's, it's in the hands of the FBI at this point. And we continue to cooperate fully with them to get them any information that, that we can provide. Are you confident that everybody's providing information? Because there's been a lot of questions about two Russian boys from Brooklyn uh, and also a guy from California, Josh, who's a uh, student from California. Again, with the specifics of who the FBI are talking to, that's, that's for them to address. We have uh, work to make everybody available within our power that, that they requested to speak with. Can you rule out tonight that passengers were not involved in some way? Well, it's, it's not my job to, to rule out who was involved or who wasn't involved or, or actually what happened. We don't know what happened, but what we do know is that our crew and our officers on board handled the situation responsibly in a manner that follows our company policy and, and in a way that was compassionate and which, which uh, retained our company value, having safety be the priority above all else. You did get a lot of complaints, I understand, of folks hearing noises, hearing things going on in the room, correct? We had, on this, on the day that George Smith went missing. We had a complaint at four, approximately four in the morning. That was a noise complaint describing poss possibly drinking games or loud partying. And as is our policy, our security responded to that complaint 
When they came to the room, they knocked on the door. It was quiet. They determined that the situation had been resolved. Had there been any sign or report of a fight or of any kind of violence in that room, our policy requires that they go in and make sure that ev all occupants of that stateroom are physically okay. But, but unfortunately, that didn't happen. It was a noise complaint. They handled it the way they're trained to and, and, and as is appropriate for a noise complaint. A number of people, though, uh, we were hearing that Jennifer actually maybe didn't make it to the room, that maybe was so drunk, didn't make it to the room. Do you know if she stayed in the room that night? Where was she? Well, I, I will just leave it that we located Miss Smith in the morning in the spa, and, and her whereabouts are really the subject for the FBI to address. Do you know if she spent the night in the room? Certainly you would know by the condition of the room. You told me about that there was some blood in the room. Uh, is it clear that she spent the night in the room? Well, I'm not going to comment on, on where she was or what, or what um, various people that the FBI were, were discussing, were interviewing, where, where they were. That wouldn't be appropriate um, at this point. We, we are here to, to set the record straight on some facts, but certainly we do have a responsibility to respect the integrity and the investigation. We have said over and over that we're cooperating, and part of that cooperation is really uh, standing behind that we're going to stick, stick with respecting the integrity of the invest investigation. So we're simply not going to discuss the, the whereabouts of, of Mrs. Hagel the night before or anything um, that the FBI is working on. Let me just ask you, because the balcony, everyone has said this, the, the way physically your ship is laid out, the way the balcony is for him to kind of go over it, uh, he would probably either have to have been playing over it or, or pushed over, helped over, uh, that a guy, even his height, would not have just accidentally fallen over. Well, well, you're correct. The ships, and it's not just the balconies, but everything on the ship, as you can see in your pictures, it's designed to be inherently safe. High rails, rails throughout the ship. Um, but it doesn't mean that there had to be. It, 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 there, there are all kinds of um, possibilities. It could be a horseplay. It could be an accident. It could be um, our, worst, our worst thoughts, that it was, it was uh, purposeful. So at this However, point, you can't rule anything out. It's just pure speculation. So I, I'm, not, I'm not here to speculate, and I'll leave that to the FBI. We will cooperate fully with them on this investigation as we have been, and hopefully they will come to some conclusion and, and give this family some measure of closure on this case. You know, real quickly, the family has essentially said that you guys are liars, that you've covered up. Uh, why do you think both families feel that way? Well, I, I think that it's hard to understand. And I'm, I'm a father, and if, if something like this happened to me, that you know, you, you can't say you know how people are going to feel. This is something that is actually immeasurable. And until you're in their, in their shoes, you really, you really don't know. So this is a, a horrible tragedy, and um, they want to find answers. They want to get them any way they can. And, and that's natural for them to want us to provide some more information. We simply don't know, but we just want to assure them that we're doing everything we can to make sure that the right people get the right information so that we can get some closure on this case. This is a, a horrible tragedy, although it's extremely rare. And, and we have um, literally thousands of people in our company that work every day to try and avoid situations like this. Do you However, believe it'll even, be solved? Even one, even one incident is too many for us. And do you believe and, it'll be solved? I, would, I hope that it's solved. I sincerely hope that this is solved and that this family um, who, who, you know, has just been through a horrible time can find some, some way to, to move forward. What is your final message to the family? I can tell you that uh, I know the George Smith family is watching tonight. Hopefully Jennifer Hagel's family is as well. Yes, and, and um, our fi our, my final um, thought for the family is that our hearts, our hearts and thoughts are with you as family members, as um, fellow humans. We, we feel for this family. We, um, we want them to get closure. We want to do everything we can to help that come to pass. Mr. Purdy, thank you very much. We appreciate you being with us. Hope to have you back on again. Thank you very much for uh, responding and talking again. The first comments uh, from the Director of Safety and Security from the Royal Caribbean Cruise Line. Now let's get some reaction, if we could, to that exclusive interview right now. Let's bring in, if we could, uh, let's bring in Vito Colucci. He's a private investigator. Also, Maritime Attorney Jack Hickey and also Clint Van Zandt, a former FBI agent and MSNBC analyst. You know, Vito, now that we've heard from Royal Caribbean, uh, do you feel like it's a cover-up, or do you feel like, uh, where do you feel like the, the straws were dropped? Uh, Rita, you know, it, it didn't make any sense what that uh, Mr. Purdy said. When you have a crime scene, whether it's in a restaurant, uh, a big concert, and there's a possible murder that goes on, 
everything stops in its tracks, okay? You do not have business as usual. People do not get off the boat to go tour and have a good time. We've seen the passengers say they saw this crime scene being clean. I can assure you the FBI did not see the blood on the canopy, you know? This was to let everybody continue to have a good time. And it doesn't work that way. It's unfortunate that people are not going to have a good time after you have a crime scene. You have to do an investigation. You have to secure that, Rita, and that's not done. He said before Congress, the cruise line handled George Smith's disappearance correctly and responsibly. No, not even close, Rita. You know, Clint, let me bring you in. He said that the room was blocked off uh, for six days. It's the first we heard of that. Uh, he said it was washed off, not painted off. Uh, but he said that he was following the lead from Turkish authorities. Uh, is that the right thing to do? Well, again, I agree with Vito. You know, n number one, as an FBI agent, before the days of whistleblowers, we would say don't embarrass the Bureau. As far as cruise lines are concerned, their, their watchword is don't inconvenience the passengers. And as much as I or Vito or someone else would like to say, freeze that crime scene, freeze everybody on the ship, get a team of, of experienced investigators on board, let's do the interviews before they share their story before the crew uh, on the ship starts to talk to people and the stories get tainted that's how the crime scene should be conducted now the cruise line is going to turn around and say we're losing millions of dollars if that ship doesn't move we may, we may not be able to get to the next port or not and I think that's why these hearings took place before Congress last week is there has to be a balance between the needs of the investigation and the financial and fiduciary responsibility that a cruise ship has to its passengers and shareholders. Jack, let me bring you in because we know that the family is planning on finding a civil lawsuit uh, involving also wrongful death and a number of things beginning of next year. Uh, do you see grounds here? Yeah, I see grounds here. And what we're missing is, you know, my perspective is that I used to represent the cruise lines for 17 years and now I fight them in court in Miami every single day. There are grounds here because there's, there's two phases and Mr. Purdy didn't even comment on the first phase. The first phase is there was a complete failure of security. Uh, I guess he actually did. He said, well, you know, there was a noise complaint. But that doesn't really jive with what uh, Cleet Hyman says. Cleet Hyman, the assistant police chief in the cabin next door, he complained about, I believe, a fight. And of course, whatever he complained about is going to be at issue there. So there are grounds there. And his statements, Mr. Purdy's statements, don't jive with all the evidence we've seen. You know, you brought out uh, Rita that he said for the first time, and this is the first time I'm hearing it, uh, that the uh, room was blocked off for six hours. Look at the statement of the cruise line. I think he just said six days. Day. I asked him six days. He agreed with six days. Six days. Well, that's that's <clears throat> even more incredible because just look at how that contradicts the cruise line's own written statement submitted to MSNBC just the other day, where they said that no, Jennifer Hegel was not uh, abandoned on the dock at Kusadasi. She was handed uh, her husband's wallet and some other things. Aha! Uh -huh. If she is handed her husband's belongings, then. There's no way that that room was sealed off. They breached that. They they breached that, and then you've right, got right went the, in, and, you know, and that's a, a, you guys. Lots of questions, all of you. Sorry, I got to cut you off because unfortunately we let uh, Mr. Purdy, because it is their first time responding, go long. We're going to have all of you back again very soon. Thank you very much. And still ahead, everybody, we're going to move on to another story. That is on for an accused serial rapist who escaped from custody. Find out if. Now, passengers tell us what they heard that night. His wife tells us what she knows about that.